exhale. Inhale and exhale. Now, what organs are involved in breathing? That's right, it is the respiratory system. Our body needs oxygen in order to live. Organisms exchange gases with the environment. This process is called respiration. Respiration includes the intake of oxygen and its delivery to the cells of the different parts of the body. Respiration or breathing is a continuous cycle. Did you know that an average person breathes 20,000 times a day? That's right. During inhalation, body takes in oxygen, which is important to many body processes. During exhalation, our body expels or breathes out carbon dioxide. A carbon dioxide is a waste gas from different body processes. Breathing is a body mechanism performed by our respiratory system. The primary function of the respiratory system is to allow the exchange of gases in the body. Specifically, it distributes oxygen to the different parts of the body and releases carbon dioxide out of the body. The respiratory system has an upper tract and lower tract. The upper tract consists of the nose, nasal cavity, and pharynx. The lower tract consists of the larynx, trachea, bronchial tubes, and lungs. Now, let us identify the different parts of the respiratory system. This is the nose. It is the outer part of our respiratory system. It is mostly made up of cartilage which makes the nose flexible and strong. The nose has two opening called nostrils. Nostril leads the airway to the nasal cavity. Nostrils are lined with small hairs called cilia. The use of cilia in our nostril is to filter the dust and other particles present in the air we are breathing. This is the nasal cavity. The lining of the nasal cavity is moist because of mucus. Tiny hairs or cilia are also lined in the nasal cavity. The hair and mucus filter out the dust and other particles that come with the air we inhale. The hair and mucus also warms and moisten the air that enters the body. We normally breathe through our nose and not through our mouth. This is the pharynx. This tube is also called throat. It is connected to both the nose and mouth and act as passageway for both air and food. This is why we can still breathe even if we pinch our nose. This structure is called tonsils. It is found at the opening of the pharynx and it destroys bacteria that enter the body via nose and mouth. This is the larynx. It is also called voice box. It is found at the lower end of the pharynx. 
When you are talking, the vocal cords in the larynx vibrate and sound is produced. This structure is called epiglottis. Epiglottis is the covering of the larynx. This small organ is important because when we breathe, the epiglottis is raised and let the air flows into the larynx and to the lungs. But when swallowing food or water, the epiglottis is pressed down the opening of the larynx to prevent food from entering. Choking happens when food accidentally goes into the trachea. This is the trachea. It is also called windpipe. It is a tube at the bottom of the larynx. Trachea is lined with mucus that help prevent dust particles and other things from entering the lungs. Trachea is connected into the lungs through bronchi or bronchial tubes. This is the bronchial tubes. These are two tubes that carry air into the lungs. Bronchial tubes branch into even smaller tubes called bronchioles. These are the bronchioles. At the end of each bronchiole is a bunch of tiny air sacs called alveoli. These are the alveoli. The exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide happens in the alveoli. The absorbed oxygen is transported throughout the body through the bloodstream, while the released carbon dioxide is exhaled. The lungs are enclosed in a coating called pleura. Pleura allows the lungs to slide freely as they expand and contract when breathing. Below the lungs is a dome-shaped muscles called the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. It is the one that controls the breathing. Now, let us describe how diaphragm works. During respiration, the diaphragm flattens out and pulls forward and making more space for the lungs. When we breathe in or inhale, the diaphragm contracts and pulls downward. This movement increases the space in the lungs, which pulls air into it. When we exhale or breathe out, the diaphragm expands and go back to normal resting position and move upward. This movement reduces the amount of space for the lungs and forces air out. The ribs and the chest cavity also move during respiration. During inhalation, the chest cavity becomes bigger as the ribs and diaphragm contract. During exhalation, the ribs and diaphragm relax and the chest cavity becomes smaller. Now that you know all the parts of the respiratory system, let us now describe the path of air during respiration. The air we breathe is not a hundred percent oxygen. It is actually a mixture of different gases. 
the air is composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 0.04% carbon dioxide, and other gases and vapors. But the only gas needed by our body is oxygen. When we breathe in or inhale, the oxygen-rich air from the environment enter the nostrils and go to the nasal cavities and then go to the pharynx and larynx. and then to the trachea and then the air will be separated in the bronchi and then move towards the bronchioles and then to the alveoli here the oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged the oxygen are transported by the bloodstream through small capillaries while carbon dioxide from the blood gets inside the alveoli and then we breathe out or exhale. The air with carbon dioxide from the body travels out through the bronchioles and then to the bronchi and then move to the trachea. and then to the larynx and pharynx and then to the nasal cavity and then out of the body and that is how respiration works and we do it again and again but according to the study the air we breathe out is composed of 78% nitrogen 17% oxygen, and 4% carbon dioxide, which indicates that we do not absorb all the oxygen in the air we breathe. That is why we will be able to supply oxygen to a person's body during mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. That is amazing, right? Now that you know how our respiratory system works, it is also important that we know how to take care of our respiratory system. Here are the 10 helpful habits that promote the proper functioning of our respiratory system and avoid respiratory ailments. Number 1. Breathe clean and fresh air. Avoid places where the air is heavily polluted. Number two, avoid smoking or secondhand smoke. Number three, stay away from people who are infected with respiratory ailments. Number four, observe proper hygiene. Number five, Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. Number six, exercise regularly to keep the body strong and healthy. Number seven, maintain the cleanliness of your surrounding. Number eight, consult a doctor for any sign of respiratory ailment. Number 9. Cover your nose and mouth when sneezing. Number 10. Vaccinate young children. Great! Now that you know all about the respiratory system and how to take care of it, let us now answer these questions. <music> 